Hi, it's Rob Bryanton back once again for the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. And uh, today we're having a little bit of fun with, uh, well, let's call this our quantum tunneling effect. So uh, as I've said in a few of the other video blog entries uh, we've done here, I'm a big fan of uh, video feedback and uh, uh, Douglas Hofstadter talks about uh, video feedback a lot in, in his books as well. And uh, it's definitely, it's, it's just something that has its own organic kind of quality to it that I think is really fun. So today's uh, video blog entry is called Wormholes, uh, and if you'd like to read along with this video blog entry, uh, go to 10thdimension.com slash blog. Uh, this is the June 29th, 2008 episode. In my book, I talk about wormholes, an interesting topic to look up in Wikipedia, and how the folds we talk about in the Imagining the 10th Dimension visualization are really another way of thinking about the wormholes that science has been theorizing about, or theorizing about. My project is unique, though, because it provides us with a filing system for how the different aspects of our reality are derived. And this logical organization gives us a way to envision how our universe is kept from wandering off into some other universe where the fine structure constant is different from ours, because it is constrained within the seventh dimension. But ultimately, what we're talking about here is what physicists like Brian Green are asking us to hold in our minds, a place where everything for every universe and every possible expression of matter, matter and energy exists simultaneously. As Dr. Green says, just as we envision all of space as being out there, as really existing, we should also envision all of time as being out there, as really existing too. If you go to the preamble link, at the main 10th Dimension website, you'll see a list of recommended books to read which connect to the ideas in this project, and that includes Brian Greene's writing. So, the animation for this project continues to generate a steady stream of comments and questions. One of the ones that came up recently was this. Would a wormhole be in the 4th Dimension or the 5th? And my answer to the question would be, depends upon the wormhole. This question is also discussed in the 10th Dimension FAQ, but it seemed like a good topic to tackle here in more depth. So let's start by counting to seven. According to the line of reasoning that comes from this project's filing system of how our reality is derived, a wormhole in the third dimension would allow instantaneous teleportation to other locations with no passage of time. A fourth dimensional wormhole would allow time travel to one specific causal future or past. A fifth dimensional wormhole would allow travel to other possible futures and pasts that are logically consistent with our current now. And a sixth dimensional wormhole would allow travel to other logically incompatible pasts and futures, like where it's 2008, but the attack on the Twin Towers never took place, or dis dinosaurs aren't extinct. A seventh dimensional wormhole would allow travel to other different initial conditions universes that have a different fine structure constant and different laws of physics from the universe in which we live. And as such, most of those universes would not be a place where our physical bodies could exist or survive. Okay, now let's uh, move on to eight. Seven was as far as I took the analogy in my book. Since each extra dimension becomes more and more unlike our own space-time, this gets harder and harder to visualize with each, each additional dimension. But let's continue this thought experiment now. By the time you're in the eighth dimension, you may well be in the highest dimension which can express matter in any way. And this may, may be the dimension where you're able to fold across universes which are derived from multiple or oscillating fine structure constants. But as a speculation, that's getting pretty out there. As I've said before in this blog, the fact that Garrett Lisi's E8 rotation is also based upon an eight-dimensional matrix may be able to be tied into this, but that remains to be seen. Now, at the ninth dimension, this could be, well, be what physicists like Wheeler and Boltzmann were thinking about as they described the roiling, fluctuating, underlying fields of quantum indeterminacy, where partial bits of order are continually appearing and disappearing. John Wheeler and Digital Physics and Infinity of the Boltzmann and the Boltzmann Brains are two blog entries related to this. The ninth dimension would be mainly fragmentary bits of order, some of which could then organize into the dimensions below. And this was where I would place things like big picture memes, or as quantum, quantum computing expert Seth Lloyd says, the initial yes-no states for the beginnings of different possible universes. So a ninth dimensional wormhole might be what you would use to jump from the 
I prefer universes that start from a high degree of order meme that our own universe is within to the I prefer universes that change very little over their entire existence organizing pattern that would be elsewhere in the ninth dimension. This also relates to the idea that information equals reality, a phrase I first learned from Anton Zeelinger and one that other quantum physicists use as well. The tenth dimension is the enfolded symmetry state where everything achieves equilibrium, a concept from this project that Dr. Sean Carroll is coincidentally now also promoting. So no wormholes are possible in the tenth dimension because anything that disturbs that equilibrium state takes us into the dimensions below and the potential expressions of mass and energy again. Likewise, since this project says time is just a direction, not a dimension, and M-theory says that there are 10 spatial dimensions plus one of time, I would say that you can't have an 11th dimensional wormhole because time isn't in a dimension, it's a direction. I also say that time is always a subset of the dimension above the one you're examining because time is part of the causal prob probabilistic set of expressions that are directly accessible from the current dimension in its current state. As I discussed in the, the blog entry, The Flipbook Universe, Without the fourth dimension, the third dimension has no way to change from state to state. In time in either direction, I talked about physicist Sean Carroll's ideas on this. Time is only one of the possible ways of navigating through the dimensions above. A wormhole would be another, but wormholes or folds would allow us to jump from one part of the possible realities to another without traveling through the causal probabilistic relationships that we are party to as we travel down our entropy-derived line of time as a particular direction within the fourth dimension. So right now, I'd like us to look at a song that, uh, that talks about some of these ideas, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. This song is called Seven Levels. Let's watch it now. Paul announced it with a gleam in his eye. Timothy found it a written on high. Sanskrit mystics, Jack was too. Everybody says it's all it must be true. There are seven levels, levels to the universe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven levels, from seven down to the first. Small. As in geometry, no width or depth, no width or depth. A place to start, imaginary construct The very first the part very first Then part. comes a line, the first dimensionality it's A simple way, from point A to B The second is a branch, from one line to another A study about, it's easy to discover There are seven levels, levels to the universe Two, 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 two From birth to death, there are seven levels, levels to the universe, to four to travel to a tree. Seven levels, seven down to the first, four to five to jump to another four. Five is a branch, we'll split in the line, back to the future. A wrinkle in time This is how it's always gone Choose one Choose one mind For the four we're on There are seven levels Levels to the universe Two to five to travel to a four Seven levels Seven down to the first Four to six to jump to another five Here we go again All seven levels At your service If we wanted to live in the world where JFK was never murdered, six 
little bit away Sends all the singularity Simultaneous every possibility Every yes and every no Eternity, infinity, impossible to know There are seven levels, levels to the universe Seven is infinity upon this board Seven levels, from seven down to the first Things get interesting here in court There are seven levels, levels to the universe Seven is infinity upon this board Seven levels, from seven down to the first Things get interesting here in court Okay, so that was one of the 26 songs from this project uh, that talk about different ideas related to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension ideas. Uh, that uh, song uh, uh, was created by Ron Scott. You hear some additional background vocals by him and, uh, and uh, the original tracks are by me. While we've been playing with these ideas, we should keep in mind that wormholes are not just science fiction and folding your mind around these concepts can be a mind-expanding experience. That's all for today from the Imagining the Tent Dimension video blog. This is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.